Do you ever stop to think when you're asking God to take it all away, I surrender all, what that really means? You can bring that up if you want to. Thank you. So do I surrender to you my finances, my pocketbook, my bank account, my every? Do I surrender those to you, God? <laughs> do I surrender my phone and laptop and my media and my emails that I want to check right now? Do I surrender all that to you? You know, if you ever really stop and think about what it means to surrender all, it means all. Every part of us, every part of our lives, whatever that may mean, surrendering our spouses up to God, our families up to God. The early Celts really understood the, that whole word when they followed Jesus was to surrender everything. They were some of the most powerful men and women of God that you can read about in history that spread the gospel in power and might. Powerfully. Powerfully. But they understood to surrender all. Met nothing in your life. Do an inventory sometime. And go through everything in your life. Lord, can I truly surrender this to you? I want to hold on to it. Can I surrender my belief patterns and whatever it is and everything I've been taught? Can I surrender those up to you so that you can correct the stuff that I've learned that is not from you and receive the stuff that is from you? Can I do that? Can I surrender that? Can I surrender my politics up to you and my candidates up to you? Can I surrender how I think about all of that up to you? Can I surrender being a liberal or a conservative or whatever it is you may fit into camp? Can I surrender that? I'll let you take care of it. Bring up that first scripture if you would, please, ma'am. This is from Zechariah. There we go. Thank you. So he answered and said this word to the Lord, of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Amen. So I want to share a testimony with you all. It's, it's a big one. But before I do that, I'll say that back in September, we held a forgiveness panel discussion here. And I was reflecting on that. Since that time, I have seen a huge increase in inner healings and deliverances that have taken place here almost daily. Um, so I kind of thought that the other, the other day as I was processing and pondering about it, I'm like, wow, that was like a, a shift, a shifting point. Um, so after that forgiveness panel, we moved into a spiritual warfare class. Um, and that's Bill Venable and I have been kind of facilitating that. But we started off with, I want to say maybe 15 people, and we're up to 18 now. Um, so the, <laughs> the more people keep coming to it, which is kind of cool. Uh, along the process, I want to say some maybe three or four weeks ago, um, we had a couple that came to join us. 
Um, and they live up in northwest Durham County, almost an hour drive from here. Um, they came because they were just in a desperate, desperate way. Um, their house had gone completely upside down. They've been in a process of attempting to remodel their, their house. Um, they got a really great price on it. And we'll find out why in about a second. Um, so they start to remodel the house, and it just like, I'll be honest with you, all hell broke loose. So while they were upstairs in the attic um, getting ready to renovate, um, they found an occult artifact. From that time, then all hell broke loose in their house. Um, in their kitchen, they had, they had so much trouble getting their kitchen remodeled. They finally got a stove that would fit into place, and two weeks later, it was completely obliterated. The, the, the cooktop was smashed in, and they're like, what happened here? Um, well, they had to replace that. They've had all kinds of anger issues in this kitchen where contractors will come in and become furiously angry and storm out and never come back. The worker that found the occult artifact in the, in the attic died three days later. Um, all of his workers that were working with him up there all took sick and went to the hospital with an unknown, undiagnosed illness. Um, I, I'm sharing bits and pieces of different stories that they've shared with us. Um, let me see, what else can I tell you about this place? Um, they have video cameras that have captured entities, lights, orbs, moving around the house all night long, and there's, n there's no explanation for it. Probably the weirdest one was a, was a person detected looking in the window. All right, not that big a deal, except that window is probably 40 feet off the ground, and there's nothing there to stand on, and no ladders. Um, Hmm? Oh, noises, yeah, yeah. So all night long, banging, walking back and forth. Um, yeah, at, at one point, the poor lady just looked at me and she's like, I haven't slept in five days. Um, it's chaos in this house. Can you help us? They, they didn't, they were desperate. They, had, they didn't know where else to turn. Um, so Bill invited them to come to the class to share this with them. And, I was sitting there listening to this, and I'm like, wow, we need a field trip. Our class needs to take a field trip. We need to go up there and pray over it and clean it all out. And Yeah, field trip. Um, well, <laughs> needless to say, is the, the moment those two words, field trip, came off of my lips, a lot of people looked at me like I might have been losing it. Um, and I started to think, well, yeah, people died. Um, what is this? And then I'm like, oh, no, no, no. We can't have this. So needless to say, not yesterday, but a week from yesterday, we had our field trip. Um, I was, I, I, I have trouble with words on this because it was beyond what my expectations could have been. It was that good. Um, I remember pulling into the driveway, and um, one of the one of the we took three carloads worth of people up there. Ten of us went up there. Um, I'm super surprised that they kind of opened their house to ten of us to come through. Um, I should say just briefly that this couple loves Jesus, but doesn't necessarily believe in all this spiritual stuff. Um, They've asked me at times, well, what, what, what do you think, what, what's going on here? And I said, and these words just popped into my head, it's the sovereign providence of God awakening you. And I don't even know what that means to them, but it was meaningful to them. Um, so we, 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 we come in and find their, their house way up in northwest Durham County, and um, 
one of the one of the people's like, I'm not parking my car. Look at those turkey vultures circling the house. She's like, I'm not parking on that land. Um, needless to say, we park. We got out of the car. Um, it was a three-story, white, colonial-looking house. It didn't look odd, except that it was on a big lot of land. And what trees were there were either dead trees or dying trees. Um, so we went in, we kind of formed our game plan, and then we started to, to move through the house. Um, I'll, I'll weave in some of the, the testimonies that I've heard people mention, which was which kind of blew my mind is um, so many of the people were experiencing what they what we talked about, but they got the first hand experience of what it was for them, but they also heard what it was for others, and it was very confirmational for them. And it helped them settle into the things that they were experiencing. They even went so far as to say, I, I now know what this is because I've felt this before and before and before and that time and that time. So they started, the, the light bulb was on. Um, we dealt with, in the kitchen where the, where the stove had been smashed and so much anger was, um, the... Uh, the the team felt like there was a very very angry woman that was just bashing pots and pans around and sure enough um, the anger left and what flooded in was joy um, the the owner the the guy that owns the guy and lady that owned the house but the guy himself was in tears at that point he's like no wonder I'm always so angry when I'm in this room. I didn't realize that that's what that was. And now he's like, now I can feel the joy. So that was, that was almost in the very beginning. Um, I'm going long. All right. So we worked our way through the rooms, through the floors. Um, we even went into the crawl space. Um, at one point, one of the rooms, one of the rooms, um, Something growled at us when we came in. Growled. Um, that was taken care of. Um, we went through, and and certain people were were noticing. I call them do jiggers, like stuff, like stuff people put on shelves and knickknacks. Um, one point, somebody's like, well, why is there a little devil knickknack here? And sure enough, there was a little thing with little red horns on it. They didn't even realize it was there. That left the house um, physically. Let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, by the time we got up into the, to the top floor, it was, it was great. We then split into two teams. One of the teams worked with the people that owned the house with some false religious background um, to clean that up. The other team went outside and, and we were working on blessing the land. Um, as we were giving, as we were cleansing the land and breaking curses off the land, it was really interesting because the, the turkey vultures had gone at this point. They left. Um, and what started to take place was you started to hear life coming back into the place. So there were no sounds of birds. Um, by the time we left, there was lots of birds. Lots of chirping, lots of singing. Oh, yeah. Um, so there was, uh, <laughs> there was in, in the back of the house, in particular, there was a, a tree that was completely dead. It didn't have any bark on it. It had no brain. It was just a skeleton of a really big oak tree. Is this the one? All right. Um, so on that, I, we, we, gave, we gave communion. Do you want me to explain that? We gave communion to the land, and we gave communion to the trees, including that dead tree. Um, and I actually asked 
the Holy Spirit if, if, if that tree could be resurrected. So it would be interesting come spring whether that completely dead thing sprouts to, sprouts to life. Um, so flash forward. The people showed up. So this was two Saturdays ago. Last Wednesday, the people showed up to, to, the, to the class that they've been attending. They drive like they commute two hours to attend a class, um, which is remarkable. They are, oh, I almost forgot this. This was a really important thing. Um, they asked if we would baptize them in the Holy Spirit. Um, so we did that. We filled them with the Holy Spirit. Um, they've, they went out and got some books. They're reading about the Holy Spirit. They're, they're coming alive. Um, okay. That's the influence they've had. So um, he just called me the other day and was asking all kinds of questions. Um, this is what their report was. Instantly, there was peace in the house. That it was settled. On Monday, well, I'm getting out of order. Let me try to stay in order. Uh, on Sunday, the, the lady plays organ at her church, was playing organ, and all of a sudden, everybody heard this beautiful voice start to begin to sing. Um, and it was, it was the lady. It was the first time she's sung in 25 years. She'd been unable to sing because she feels like she's being strangulated. Um, but she was just belting it out out of nowhere. For 25 years, she's been unable to sing. She's singing in church now. Um, the guy reports that he, hasn't, he, has, he has asthma issues. He hasn't used his inhaler yet. So, so we're seeing physical healing manifestation from all of this. Um, the inspector came to inspect the staircase and the framing in the, in the upper room, which is where all the action was. Um, and the inspector passed them on the first shot of their inspection, which hasn't happened yet for them. And the inspector was in a great mood, and the inspector had, could have had reason to say no, but he didn't. So they were automatically remarking how unique that was. They've also told me that they've had multiple contractors in, and actually for the first time in more than three years, things are getting done. They're not just being taken apart, they're being put back together. Um, oh, yes. Um, they are able to sleep now. They haven't had any sleeping problems, except that they didn't realize that when their heater turned on, they could hear it. Now they can hear it, which is kind of an indicator of just how much noise was present in that house all the time. They couldn't hear it when their heater turned on and off. Now they can. Um, Another good thing is the lady reports the fact that in her bedroom at nighttime, it's dark. I'll let you think about that. It wasn't previously dark at nighttime. It's supposed to be dark at nighttime. Well, it is now. Um, they also noticed that it's light at daytime in their house. Um, anyways, I we've what I've seen which is just I, I rejoice in this I praise God for this um, I've seen people's gifting growing not just in in knowledge but in practical use I've seen I've seen people with greater assurance greater confidence um, I've seen them literally, I've watched people have aha God moments. Uh, it's, I couldn't, I, I started this off with, I, I guess my expectations were we'd get up there, 
we'd clean it up and it would be good. Um, well, I think what we've seen and what I've been able to bear witness to has been better than good. It's been extraordinary, exceptional, um, remarkable, awe-inspiring. Yeah, hold on. Is there a direct relation? Is there a direct relationship to forgiveness in that story for you? The reason I wove that in is because that seemed like a, a, a watershed moment when, since that time, not just in this story, but I've I've been able to witness other stories where there's been. Freedom found. Liberty is here. It's here, available to us. I don't know if I answered your question. One of the things you, oh, you, you might think about, too, is breathe deeply when you're here. Because we pray for this place every day in its totality for healing and deliverance prayers, healing deliverance, whatever, even in the atmosphere that you breathe, we pray that every day here, every day. So breathe deeply. Well, what I have is not a question, but just a comment for myself, and I kind of challenge others here, too, to put, look inside yourself, is why am I surprised? You know, it's interesting because we live in a, a time where, in a culture, that would look at them, uh, if they came and said something, they would probably put those two on medications to help them sleep, medications to help them quit hearing things, um, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that, was the, that would be the psychology of today. And what we don't understand is, and, and, and I shared this when I went to Ephesians, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and high places. And they're all here. They're all around us all the time. And they're always looking for venues and avenues to bring destruction, to kill, steal, and destroy. And it's not something that we ever have to fear. Now, if you go after in your own power and might, you're going to lose. Not by might, not by power, but my my spirit, saith the Lord. Yes, sorry, Frida. Um, I'm in this class. I wasn't, I didn't get there. I was in the mountains. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have gone anyway. But I was, <laughs> I was um, praying for them. But I wanted, to, I was there the first night that couple came. And they were, never seen them before. But you could just tell they were so distraught and so stressed. And to see them this past Wednesday, their faces were glowing. They were relaxed. It was like a totally different couple. And I'm sorry, I can't even remember their names. But um, if you guys, if we do this class again, oh, my goodness, please sign up for it. It is just amazing. I had an amazing thing that kind of happened that, God showed me in the, um, can we go on? Yeah, okay, so um, many of you know, or I know Pastor David does, many of you know Ginger Arnold that used to be in this church and um, about six, 17, 18 years ago, David says to me, there's this lady in the church, her husband has a dementia type problem like your husband does and it might be nice if you take her to lunch. Well, I took her to lunch, fast forward, we've been friends for like, 17 years, I go stay with her up in Cashers, which is a beautiful area. And I've been in her house a lot of different times, many, many, many times. But I slept in a different bedroom this time uh, due to some circumstances of mine. <clears throat> and um, so the first night, I mean, it's like this four-poster bed, beautiful view of the mountain, lovely. I could not sleep at all. It was demonic all night long, and I was like, what? I mean, I was pleading the blood of Jesus, praying the whole thing, the whole night. Next morning, she said, did you sleep good? I'm like, no. I mean, so I was 
telling her, and I was like, who, who slept in that room last? And she told me who slept in the room last, and it's some family members of her, and they're very, very, very liberal. She said, I don't know what all they're into, but I was like, man, it was game on. So she had some holy water. We prayed over the room. Second night, I slept great. Here comes the third night. There was some more stuff. I don't know. I didn't know what. She keeps a lot of books. She's a book fiend like I am. Buys a lot from thrift stores and stuff. So I'm walking out to go to the restroom the next morning. I look down, and it was like this book just whoop flew up in my face. Not literally, but it was like Grimm's fairy tales. And it was like, whoa. I don't know what it is, but that book's got to go out of here. So we took the book out, and the um, next, next couple of nights were great. So, you know, it's, God's already teaching me stuff um, through this class because I've been a Christian since I was nine. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because so many things that we can think of that we bring into our home, oh, this is cute, this is nice. A lot of people do that. They'll go to different countries and they'll bring back ambulance or they'll bring back little car things and don't think anything of it, put them in their house, and then all of a sudden stuff starts to happen. They don't even understand. That was a problem with my dad. Uh, he brought all kinds of stuff back from the Congo, and that, that home was uh, always something going on in it. It was a mess. And, of course, later on when I became a believer, I understood what all of those little different things that he had because, I mean, he would bring um, witch doctor stuff that they had had, but he, he'd bring this other little things that were cute, but they were, they were related to uh, uh, sexual things and all, I mean, you name it. And so every one of my sisters, except the one adopted and myself, went through a divorce. All of us. I had five sisters, one that was adopted did not. She's, she did fine. The rest of my sisters and I, I mean, there was so much of that kind of stuff that went on. It was amazing. Um, but I look back on that and realize, you know, there's a lot of things that what we, we make the moral choice to bring that stuff in, whatever it may be. You know, do a cleansing of your house. Oh, you guys are just superstitious. Live with it. That's fine. Go ahead. I don't care. I mean, I do care. I care about you. But if you want to live in a house of havoc and, and whatever else it may be influencing whatever it is that's going on in your lives or your kids' lives or whatever, you might want to ask God, God, what is in this house that's not pleasing to you or that can cause situations that don't need to be here. Anybody else? Because there are others here that are in the class who went on the field trip. Does anybody else who went on the field trip want to share anything? From your personal perspective? I, I want to be really crystal clear. It was Jesus that did all this stuff. It wasn't the class. It wasn't me. It had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do with any of the people that went. It was the Holy Spirit literally doing something miraculous. And let's just stay there. Somebody asked a question to Jeff. Well, really, why'd you take a whole bunch of people? Why didn't David just go and do it all? <laughs> yeah. And, and the stupidity behind that is, then who learns? Not, there's no one here that's a believer that should not know how to cast out a demon or clean out a house with boldness. Now, don't get, let that condemn you. It's probably because you've never been discipled in it, and that's what it takes. It takes being discipled in those kinds of things to learn that, to be able to, be able to sense when you go into a place what's good, what's evil, what's, what, what you should stay away from. 
When I was in Congo, I was looking at curios and walking up and down the different aisles. As soon as I walked down one, I said, oh, I know what this is. I could feel it. It was all the witchcraft and stuff, uh, ambulance and everything else that they sold in one whole aisle. I just stayed away from that. But what if you didn't understand that feeling? What if you didn't know what that was that God was trying to show you? And, and that was what was so neat watching these, these guys because we'd go into a room and say, all right, well, what are you feeling? What's going on here? And they'd name this stuff, and it was just right on. I, I, what surprised me was everybody felt something. It wasn't just one person. Mm -hmm. going, Ooh, it's cold in here. Right? Everybody had some sort of, I use this word as manifestation, but expression of what they were feeling. Um, so it wasn't just one of us. Every ten, all ten of us had some sort of something happen each time we walked into a different room. That was that was the part that was kind of kind of made me go, "Wow, God!" Is how somebody would get goosebumps and somebody would feel a chill and somebody would get an, an upset stomach and somebody would get a, an ache or, um, but it was all pointing to the same thing. And then what was really just such a blessing to see is the feedback. Everybody said this. It was so good to be working as a team with the Holy Spirit and learning how, what it felt like for us, what, you, what one could see, one could feel, one could, I mean, it was, it was beyond my expectations. Why was it beyond my expectations? I guess I hadn't seen or considered that unity coming and wrapping that whole group of 10 up. That wasn't something that I had, it was a pleasant surprise to me. You know, the scriptures say, and he gave some as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to do all the work. Huh? He gave some as, a, stay put, Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to do all the work. No, I said to equip the saints for the work. The sad reality is in many churches, well, the, the, this couple goes to a particular church, and I said Bob Jones. Bob Jones does not believe that the gifts or any of the Holy Spirit workings are for today. That was only for the first century. It's called cessation and dispensationalism. And so the, these two thought they were crazy. And somehow they found out about Bill. They wanted to talk about Well, through this whole process, they've come to grips with the fact that, no, it's still very vibrant and real. Thank God. Otherwise, they'd be living in a noisy house, never getting it finished, and, and, and thinking they were crazy. They were, they were. At one point after a class, this was even before we went to their house. The lady reported she comes into the class and she gets this immediate headache. And I said, well, can I pray for you? So I put my hand, I, I said, can I pray for you? And she said, and her husband's like, yes. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I kind of need her permission. I want to put my hand on her head. And she finally said, okay. I prayed for her that Jesus would give her peace and that the head would go away. The head. Oh, oh, the headache would go away. <laughs> Her headache would go away. I took my hand off her head, and she just she was just locked eyes with me, and she was so baffled and perplexed. And she said, "I feel peace, and I don't have a headache anymore." But you could see just the the battle that was going on between her convictions and her now reality of no headache. It, it wasn't she couldn't connect it or compute it. And finally, I looked at her, and I'm like, well, that's good, right? She's like, yep. I'm like, and you're happy, right? Yes, I'm happy, but I'm confused. Um, so. Yeah, cause, and, and in that culture, they believe that that kind of stuff, it, tongues and all that is of the devil. That's literally how they believe. Um, 
because it, it does, I mean, that's close to blasphemy in a way, but um, because that's the Holy Spirit. But I'm not going to label them in that context or anybody else that believes that way. It's just how they've been. To me, it's a deception that Satan has planted so that these works of power will not be manifest. And thank God we exist that, that, that somebody, I mean, I've had people for years call me up and say, hey, I understand y'all do deliverance prayer. And I said, yeah, and they're going to some other church. Said, well, I can't find anybody that does it. Can I come see you? They come, they get prayed for, they're fine, they go away. I never see them anymore. Um, but it, that's the sad state of affairs when you consider the whole body of Christ. And I, I, I just pray that more and more and more, I mean, because in the prophetic world and all those kind of things, we're training hundreds of churches. In the Bill and the Spirit stuff, we've trained lots of different churches in it. Um, and this is another whole realm that I, I and, and in inner healing and all that. To me, I love inner healing, but we don't want to leave out the aspect of deliverance in it because it's a, it plays a huge part, especially people that have been involved in the occult. Now, here's the thing. You ever played with a Ouija board? You ever uh, played around with astrology? You need to get set free from that because it can affect you today. I had a girl having nightmares, came to me. I think I told you this story. She was totally clean. Most righteous girl I'd, 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 I'd talked to in a long time as far as her life and what she'd been through and done. Except one thing, when she's at a pajama party, she played with a Ouija board. Innocence, big deal. We prayed for her. She renounced it. She never had any more of those nightmares. Gone. Gone. So we don't know how all of this stuff can affect us in some capacity or other. And, and, and Mark 16, let me read this. Going to all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Sorry, Beth, I'm ahead of you. He who believes in, in, and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. How many of us truly believe that? Are all these signs following you who believe? Now, the early believers believed it, and they saw it. Somewhere along the line, we've gotten into all these weird theologies that have conflicted with what God has wanted for us to move into and continue in. And Satan's having a heyday with people, totally. Oh, yes, he's had a heyday with the snakes and stuff, too, because there are whole things that build their whole church around playing with snakes. No. Paul got bit by a snake, but he understood that scripture, and he shook it off into the fire because he knew he was on doing what God called him to do. Yes. And it didn't kill him. But to tempt, to play with snakes, and, oh, I believe this scripture, that's tempting God. No. I used, I've used this stuff with diseases, with tick bites, with everything. Though I take up this bite... This shall not happen to me. Though I take, you know, I mean, there's so much that God has given to us that he wants us to, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Well, whose fault is that? Well, I'll say one thing. It's the fault of leaders in many churches because they do not understand a lot of this and, run, and are afraid of it. But then I say to those who have this, and neglect it, then you've made a moral choice to just be laissez-faire. Have you really surrendered? Yeah, go back to surrender. Have you truly surrendered? If a demonic person faced you, would you know what to do? Would you know what to tell them? Go see Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what if Jeff's not around? Hallelujah.